Hi there, dental professionals. So we're finally going back to level two during COVID-19. I am so excited. I can't wait to be going back to seeing my patients again. And how good will it be to going back to some form of normality? As much as it's been fun to sit at home and binge on Netflix, whoops. But hey, I'm super excited to be going back to work and I hope you are as well. Now, as you know, we're going back to work, but it is not business as usual because we are still restricted with not being able to produce aerosols. And of course, one of the main things that produces aerosols is ultrasonics, AMS and Cavitrons, calculus removal instruments, absolutely. And so we have been told that we can use hand scalers. I'm betting quite a few of you haven't used hand scalers in a while. And even when you did, it was only for short periods of time. You certainly were not using hand scalers over and over again for the whole day. So I thought I'd help you guys out um, and do a tutorial on how to use hand scalers without hurting yourself. How to use hand scalers without going home with a dead hand and blisters. How to use hand scalers and achieve the same result that you would if you were using an ultrasonic or an EMS or a Cavitron. And also how to use the hand scalers without hurting your patient. Because after all, these things look nasty. They've got a pointy sharp end and you can do damage. So let's not go start using these if you haven't had any practice in a while. <laughs> so let's get straight into it. What I'm gonna go through today with you is first of all, Picking the right instrument, understanding your instrument and the different components, how to position the instrument, how to position your body so you don't hurt yourself, and then how do we actually remove the calculus. So today we will be focusing on supragingival calculus removal. If you guys want me to do another tutorial on how to remove calculus subgingivally with root planning and debridement, please comment below and I'd be more than happy to make one of those videos for you as well. Um, just so you guys know, um, I am an oral health therapist. I graduated from Melbourne University about 12 years ago. Since then, I have not stopped working. I've been working in private practice for majority of my career. Um, also, I did a master's degree and I'm doing a PhD right now. I love what I do. I absolutely love hygiene. Um, I love my patients, um, but most importantly, I find it super satisfying to remove those calculus deposits and if any of you are strange like me, cool. <laughs> Some of you might also be wondering whether it's really worth doing hand scaling. I mean, does it achieve the same result as you would if you were using an EMS or an ultrasonic? Um, so in actual fact, yes, you can absolutely achieve the same result as has been shown by several studies. A study in 1987 by Oosterwall compared the two and they found there was absolutely no microscopic differences between using hand scalers and ultrasonic instruments. But I must add into that that it is technique dependent, which is why I wanted to do this tutorial for you guys. So let's get straight into it. First of all, let's talk about the instrument. So with supragingival calculus removal, what you need to be using is a sickle scaler or a mini sickle. Um, I have a couple here and you can see that these are all the same instrument, but they have different designs. One thing is the same about all of them, and that is that they have a sharp pointy end. All right. Now that is the instrument you should be using with supragingival calculus removal. You don't want to be using Gracie curettes for supragingival calculus removal because that's not what they're designed for. Usually calculus that is supragingival is a lot thicker in deposits. It's really thick and hard. And in order to remove it effectively, you need to be using one of these instruments which can take that load. Using a curette, there is a risk that you might actually break the instrument in someone's mouth. Okay, so the first thing we need to look at is the different parts of the instrument. So here we have the sickle scaler with the different components. This is the pointy sharp tip. You can see it's really sharp. We've got the face, the two cutting edges. That's what we'll be removing the calculus with. We've got the terminal shank and the functional shank. So the first thing we've got to get right is the modified pen grasp. In this grasp, all the fingers are working together as one unit. 
you have the thumb and the index finger opposite each other on the handle, the third finger is on the shank, and the fourth finger will be acting as a fulcrum and finger rest. So now we've got to figure out which is the correct working end. The way that we do that is by putting the instrument against the distal surface of a posterior tooth, just like that. You can see that the lower shank is parallel to the distal surface of that five, and the functional shank is coming up and over the tooth. This is correct. Let's see what the other side looks like. Hmm, that doesn't look so good. So you can see that the shank is actually coming across the tooth, and in this position, we simply cannot remove the calculus. So let's go back to the correct side. Very nice. Okay, so now we're ready to remove the calculus. I have my finger rest. Have your finger rest, which is your fourth finger, as close to the tooth that you're gonna be removing the calculus on as possible. Now that I've got that stabilized, let's put the tip on the tooth. Now remember that you will be removing the calculus using the tip third of the instrument. Let's put that on. Now lean the instrument into the tooth and begin moving in short, sharp strokes upwards. The strokes should only be a couple of millimeters long and you're working and leading with the tip all the way to the distal surface. You can see this patient's got some nice smoking stains there. The Rona must have gotten really stressed out. And then we keep going all the way to the other side, just like that. You might be able to hear little scraping sounds and that's fine. In terms of pressure, I'm applying moderate lateral pressure. You shouldn't have to apply too much pressure if your instrument is sharp. Okay, so let's do another tooth. So we start in the middle and again, short, sharp strokes up. Here I'm going vertically, but you can also use oblique or horizontal strokes. I can demonstrate that for you now. This is a horizontal stroke. Be very careful of that tip though. Moving on to the next tooth again. Short sharp strokes. All the way to the back. Start in the midline again. This is an oblique stroke now. Great, and you just keep on going just like that until all of that calculus is gone. Um, obviously, as you're doing this, you're also gonna need some gauze um, to wipe the instrument because there's gonna be blood and calculus deposits on there. So I like to use a 7.5 by 7.5 non-woven gauze. It's nice and thick. And when I use it, I will usually fold it up um, so that way you're less likely to prick yourself as you do this. Be really, really careful. Make sure you don't cause yourself an injury. When you do restorative work, you quite often sit straight behind the patient at 12 o'clock. But with removing calculus, you do want to be moving around the patient all the way from eight and nine o'clock all the way around. Because when you're debriding, you're working on so many different surfaces from posterior to anterior. So you need to be moving around in order to prevent back and neck injuries, guys. Super important, move around. The other good reason to move around is that quite often you'll think that you've removed all the calculus from the lower interiors, but go to nine o'clock and have a look because quite often you will actually have missed areas. Another way to make sure that you don't fatigue yourself is to make sure that you actually use your whole arm and your body to remove the calculus. Don't do finger flexing. Finger flexing, if you don't know, it's when you've got the fulcrum and instead of moving your whole arm and shoulder, you're actually just doing this 
And of course, as you do this, my goodness, your hands and your fingers are going to be absolutely exhausted. Like even doing this right now is already hurting my fingers. So you can imagine doing this for hours and hours, you will not survive people. So use your whole arm as so, use your whole arm and your shoulder to remove the calculus by pivoting against the tooth, leaning on that fulcrum, and that's how you remove the calculus. So guys, I hope that was really helpful and I hope that when you start seeing your patients next week and you're hand scaling, you remember me and you remember the techniques that I just showed you. Um, remember to sharpen those instruments guys before next week go to your practice and sharpen them because there is nothing worse than using blunt instruments you will be there forever and you're gonna give up trust me you're gonna see one patient gonna be like I am NOT doing that again so use the right instrument use the right technique make sure it's sharp if you enjoyed this video guys please hit the like button and subscribe because that'll tell the YouTube algorithm to push this video out to more clinicians out there and of course it helps encourage us that would be super super helpful thanks for listening take care and enjoy going back to work people Mwah.